just to let you know that uh, we will be recording this session so that uh, we can um, share it out with you later if you wanted to go back and uh, look at any of the information or um, anybody that wasn't able to stay for the full time today can go back and, and take a look at those pieces. So, so we welcome you. I think we're almost all here, Kim. I think so. So we can probably start. And then if anybody else joins, we can just catch them up. Oh, there we go. Okay. So welcome to um, our Mentoring in Schools, Mentoring 101. Um, I know that there are, we have a, people from a variety of places and backgrounds. So um, we're really hoping that we'll be able to meet um, all of your needs and everything that you hope to get out of today. So certainly we're a small enough group that if we aren't, um, if we aren't covering something that you were interested in hearing about, please feel free um, to ask. So we're really open to that and can somewhat uh, customize what we're talking about today. So I think that um, Kim is gonna start out with our introductions. So uh, just to let you guys know who we are um, on the line today, we have uh, Shannon Whalen, who is our Calgary Regional Consultant, um, who helps us out with everything technical and all our registrations. So welcome tonight, uh, Shannon. Uh, Caroline Gosling is going to be your uh, main facilitator, and I'll be jumping in. Um, Caroline is with AMP and my name is Kim McConnell and uh, I'm also a partner but a very new partner with AMP and um, so that's just a little bit about us and then we'll get to know you guys a little bit better as we move through. So um, one of the first questions that I'd like to ask out to the group and feel free to unmute yourself to share or to throw it into the um, chat box but um, let us know your name, what organization you're with, and if you could answer this question for us, and it's kind of hard for you to see, but what is something kind that someone else has done for you recently? So what is something kind that someone else has done for you recently? So and we're, I'm just going to leave it open for you to think about that for a moment. And then um, if we don't get any volunteers, I'll go through the participant list. I can share my something kind, Kim. Perfect. So I'm, um, I'm in the process of moving and several of my friends have offered to come help pack which has been much appreciated and very kind. I had someone buy lunch for me the other day, which was very nice. Oh, thanks, Amanda. Amanda, and where are you from? I'm from Boys and Girls Clubs, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Edmonton area. Oh, so you're in the Edmonton area. Well, yeah. well. And I noticed that Leanne in the um, chat box said that her supervisor bought her coffee for the office. So that was a great treat. Leanne, do you mind sharing with us where you're from today? Cold Lake, lovely area. I was just down at our beach uh, in Slave Lake last night and it was wonderful. Thanks, Liz. Oh, okay. So Liz um, is with Biggs in Edmonton and her friend brought her apples uh, from her tree because she knows that she likes to bake. Mm. Sounds like you're going to have some nice treats at your house, Liz. Amy, do you have anything that you'd like to share with us? Sure. Um, well, I have meetings 
all week after school. So my mom has volunteered to take my daughter to dance for me. So that's a huge help. <laughs> uh, and um, what organization are you with, Amy? I'm at the Lacombe Junior High School. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Kevin is also from Big Edmonton and area. And um, he says that our agency is hosting a staff appreciation event for us. And they treated us to pretzels among other gifts and food. Food always does it, doesn't it? Gregory. Go ahead, Danielle. Um, I'm Danielle. I'm also from BGC Bix of Edmonton. Um, and something kind, someone something did for me. Um, Amanda is my my boss, and she bought me a, a coffee, a mocha the other day when I was in the office. So we've got lots of folks just reaching out and being um, that natural support to us in these tough times as we're getting used to either floating from home to office and back again. Uh, is it Raina or Rana? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's Rana. Thanks, Rana. Uh, something nice is uh, uh, my coworker, Elizabeth, has been really nice to me, teaching me what to do. Some of the stuff that I freak out because I'm super new here. It's my first month. So she's been really nice about helping me out with work stuff. <laughs> Wonderful. And Val is from Bears Club Christian School, and she's working on her something kind. Oh, sorry, that was from Gregory. Um, Hannah is from Biggs Edmonton, and her grandma stopped by the other day to drop off a bunch of different vegetables from her garden. Oh, I love fresh vegetables. Oh, okay, Amanda, thank you. Uh, so it looks like we've got a lot of folks onboarding some new staff and Caroline's doing that for me to, um, and this is one of the ways that she's, um, she's helping me to onboard. Is there anybody else out there that uh, would like to share their something kind before we move on? I will. I'm uh, with Grand Prairie Public School Division, and uh, my daughter actually offered to cook dinner tonight, which was wonderful. But uh, yeah, that's my something kind for today. That is wonderful, considering you're going to be on here for a little bit. It usually goes into that making dinner hour. Hey, Wendy. <laughs> and I'm from that same, like, northern area, so Grand Prairie is only a couple of hours. Well, I guess three hours away from where I am, but... Uh, yeah, we visit that as well, that area too. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Val. So Val's using Gregory's computer, but her something kind and how her coworkers always make sure that there is chocolate around. Yes. Looks like everybody's had a chance to share, Caroline. I'll share my something kind. Um, my son works multiple jobs, but one of his jobs through COVID has been at our local Tim Hortons. And I usually get a London fog and it always has a little note on it. And today's was um, just with love, with an, and a heart. Um, and so he dropped that off uh, about an hour ago to help me get through um, my nervousness in my first session tonight, so. And I'll uh, hand it over to you, Caroline. Thanks everyone for sharing. Um, I think, you know, especially during these times, that idea that kindness is so important. So it's a great reminder for us to think about um, who's been, who's done random acts of kindness for us, even though it's not February and uh, who, um, how can we pass that on? So thanks for sharing. This slide, we just thought we'd have up. Um, and I think we all know this, especially in the work that we do. Um, that that one stable supportive relationship is so important to our students. And we think about, um, and our children and youth, and especially now, um, there's been lots out in the, in the news and in the research about how many of our children and youth have fared during COVID and continue to fare. And that idea of feeling very isolated and disconnected. So um, now more than ever, those relationships with adults are, and, and even older teens, um, 
are so important. So um, some of this at the, at the beginning, we just wanted to talk about, I don't know um, how many people are familiar with the Alberta Mentoring Partnership. I don't know if you can all use your hands up feature, but if you're familiar with AMP, um, maybe just put your hand up in your picture. So not, not a lot. Okay, this is good. <laughs> good and uh, in some ways. So AMP is, um, it's kind of a collective impact model. So it's a partnership between government ministries, um, government funded organizations, schools, community agencies, um, all working together to support and build awareness of the importance of mentoring in Alberta. So AMP doesn't do any direct mentoring. Um, we really support um, mentoring in other organizations and schools. So that's, uh, that's who we are. Our funding comes from predominantly from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Children's Services. So of course, a lot of AMP's priorities um, align with those ministries priorities. So mentoring in schools and then with children's services priorities around mentoring, um, I hate using the term vulnerable youth, but um, I'll use that for the purpose of, of this. So youth in care, indigenous children and youth, um, um, sexual gender diverse youth. So a lot of those kinds of populations um, of, of young people. And that's reflected in our um, strategic plan and our operational plan. And then this is just, um, this is really our, our mission and vision. And we, AMP has recently in their last strategic plan really expanded um, what we consider to be mentoring. So beyond the formal mentoring that we may think of right away when we hear that term, we've really expanded it now into looking at um, informal mentoring and even natural supports and looking at that continuum. And you know, a lot of that is because we know um, now more than ever, there aren't going to be enough one-on-one -on -one adult mentors for all our children and youth that could use that kind of support. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we go through. So again, what is mentoring? I think all of you that are here um, probably uh, have a pretty good idea of what it is. This is just the definition that AMP uses. And then, um, and you may have seen this before, I really like this kind of story. So uh, a number of years ago, Michelle Obama um, spoke at um, a Big Brothers Big Sisters of America event. And she talked about this story about how we should always have three friends in our lives, the one who walks ahead that we look up to. So our mentor, the one who walks beside us, and then the one that we reach back for and bring along. So the person that could be considered, we could be considered mentoring them. So just something to keep in mind as we, um, as we go through today and we look at the different roles that we play and the different roles that um, some of our youth can play as well. So this, um, this is just what some of the research says about the benefits of mentoring. And for those of you that have um, some experience with mentoring, this may not be a surprise to you, but um, just want you to take a look. And then is there anything there that surprises you? Anything unexpected? You can feel free to unmute or if you have any comments that you wanna put in the chat. Caroline, when I re look at this slide, the one that stands out for me is 2.5 times more likely to participate in extracurricular school activities is kind of one that, um, that jumps out um, for me, um, especially because most of the kiddos that I have worked with in my past have been those younger elementary kiddos where you see their parents picking them up after school. Um, but I can see how the relationship of having a mentor, um, even if it's a peer mentor or um, a teen mentor might have them participate in these activities. Mm -hmm. 
when I look at these two, I think about from a school perspective, um, how many of these are, are priorities in schools. And so again, um, as we try to, as we try to raise awareness of these benefits, and particularly around mentoring in schools, um, sometimes these um, stats are really helpful in um, talking with schools about why they might want to think about bringing mentoring into their building, whether that be kind of formal or informal. Um, so it's kind of a, a way to that. Um, we can, for lack of a better word, sell mentoring at the school level. And then we've been talking about this at AMP as we start to make plans for Mentor Month in January is as we try to um, kind of recruit more mentors, we don't uh, talk as much about what are the benefits to the mentor. We tend to focus on what are the benefits to the mentee. And even in research, there's far more research on benefits to the mentee and not to the mentor. But these are some of the um, benefits that again, are found in research around what, um, you know, kind of what's in it for the mentor, what are the benefits um, to, for the mentor. And again, this is equally, um, you find it equally among adult mentors and also teen mentors. So we're going to be kind of, we'll be talking about teen mentoring today, but when we think about the benefits for those teens, about increased empathy, improved social skills, um, capacity for teamwork, understanding of diversity, all great skills. Also, when we talk about corporate mentoring, um, businesses are often interested in how having their employees mentor will benefit their company. So again, you can kind of see through this what that might look like. Any questions or comments? Um, about the benefits? Anything that you've seen um, in your experiences that kind of reflect these benefits or others that you've seen? We've definitely heard from families um, about the improvement in academic achievement. Um, we did some focus groups last um, spring to talk a little bit about our mentoring programs and, and there were parents that had indicated that their over the course of even just two or three months, their child had increased their reading level um, to be grade level, um, the grade that they were in, um, which was a full grade level from where they started. So um, definitely re resonates with um, what we hear from our families. That's great. And was um, was kind of literacy part of the focus of that? It was. It was one of the goals. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's true um, in a lot of schools. That idea of, of literacy is is one of the one of the outcomes that people are looking for. I've I've also seen um, and Kim, I don't know if you have seen the same thing. I've also seen that um, attendance can sometimes improve <laughs> when students have a mentor and when they're feeling more connected at the school. And I always think how, you know, that impacts academic achievement as well, because it's really hard to learn when you're not there. So um, I think there's probably some correlation there, but I really noticed that too with the team mentors, um, how, you know, they get to school on time and they're there because they know that their little person is counting on them um, to be there. So a couple of other things to think about. Anything else that people have experienced or noticed? I'm curious about our folks from Cold Lake and Grand Prairie. Um, are there any formalized mentoring um, partnerships that are happening in your um, community or, or is it just informal partnerships? I know that I, I worked in um, the area of Slave Lake for many years, but then I was also um, working for Grand Yellowhead, which was it's into Jasper up to Grand Crash. And we don't actually have any boys and girls clubs or any formalized um, groups that can come out and do mentorship. But I see a lot of informal um, mentoring that happens either between our older students and our younger students or from the um, after school care program um, providers um, in our schools.
I'll go ahead and uh, let you know a little bit about what I know what, what's happening in Grand Prairie. With the Catholic school division, that's where my children um, attend school, and there's um, a, some kind of reading partnership that uh, the children have where they would read to, the grade sixes would read to grade one, and um, they have that going throughout the year. Uh, my children really enjoyed it. Um, as for the Grand Prairie Public School Division, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm new to the division, so I'm still seeking out uh, resources and programming and trying to figure out what, um, what's happening and what's been, what's working and um, get myself wrapped around that. Um, but we do have the Boys and Girls Club um, in Grand Prairie. And we also have a Patoni youth group with the Grand Prairie Friendship Center. And um, the youth group, they, it's kind of like a peer mentoring within the group itself. It's for um, any member of the Grand Prairie Friendship Center for the children to, I believe it's from ages 10 to, or sorry, 13 to 18, where they learn about relationships and sexual health and um, learning about uh, the Indigenous cultures. And uh, within within their group, they, they kind of mentor each other. It's like a natural leadership that occurs. And um, that's, that's what I know about <laughs> the mentoring groups in Grand Prairie for now. Thanks for sharing that, Wendy. That's great to hear. And Leanne's yeah. added to the chat that um, there's no informal, formal mentoring that, that she is aware of in Cold Lake that there had been a youth child mentoring program that her children participated in. Yeah, you know, I know that, um, I know that, that um, there was a mentoring program in Cold Lake that, that Boys and Girls Clubs, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Edmonton supported. But um, then I know that when that support um, ended, there wasn't really anybody to keep it going. So yeah, that's, that's often, the case that we see in some communities where there's somebody, even when there's somebody championing mentoring and then that person leaves or even the same in a school, um, it kind of dwindles. So one of the challenges. Okay. Um, so again, when we think about why we might want to look at mentoring and again, um, you know, as a formal principal and, and working in the school system and being a huge advocate for mentoring. Um, I was always looking for ways to convince my colleagues this was a good thing to do. And sometimes it's, it's about um, connecting it to either what is required in legislation or um, what are some of those district and school, go and, and school goals. So um, when Alberta Education was involved in changes to our legislation that came into effect in 2015. There was a lot of research done around what practices really contribute to a welcoming, caring, respectful, and safe learning environment. And the two that kept coming up repeatedly were mentoring um, and restorative practices. But mentoring was one of the ones that came up repeatedly. Um, and now we know in our, we have um, fairly new still um, teaching quality standards and leadership quality standards. And the very first thing in both of those is relationships and the importance of relationships. So again, um, there's really a recognition of how that is critical in our schools and it's foundational to everything else. And we know that, um, the staff in the school, particularly teachers can't be all things to all all kids and despite how um, wonderful they are, not every child is gonna connect. So how do we bring in other people um, to create those important relationships? And again, um, contributes to a sense of belonging and, and purpose. We talked a little bit about increased attendance and engagement and both that increased attendance and engagement really contribute to um, a higher high school completion rate. So we'll talk a little bit about different types of mentoring and then we'll spend some time um, talking specifically about teen mentoring. Um, so we, I mentioned 
uh, at the beginning when I was talking about AMP, how AMP is really expanding their um, definition of mentoring. So, you know, at one end, we have that idea of natural supports. So just those people who are already in our um, children and youth lives um, that provide a support for them, it could be an aunt, it could be a grandma, um, it could be a neighbor, um, it could be a coach. And then we get into that more informal mentoring and there's lots of different, um, different ways that that happens in schools and outside of schools. And then we get into that more formal one-to-one -one mentoring. So some, um, oopsie, some kind of informal mentoring that can happen, um, particularly in schools, and it was already mentioned, that idea of reading buddies. So many schools have older students reading to younger students. And um, it depends on how that starts out. So in schools I've been in, sometimes the students just go, they pick up their little reading buddy, um, and they just start reading. But in schools that really want to focus on building those connections and relationships, they strengthen that a little bit by a keeping the two, um, the two students together for longer periods of time and not switching them as often. And then every time they see each other, choosing a question that they're going to start out with to strengthen that relationship. So maybe before they start reading, they have a conversation about, um, you know, what's their favorite dessert? Or maybe it's if you could have any pet, what pet would you have? So just starting it out on that relation with a relational kind of piece and then getting into the, um, into the reading. And I think that those, uh, those relationships can really strengthen even your school and classroom culture as kids get to know each other from different grades and across the school. I, um, I worked in a K to nine school for a while in Edmonton's inner city. And we had a class of, um, well, we had a class that was for students who had a, who had, um, a label of having pretty significant behavior and emotional difficulties. I still, some school districts choose to put them all together in a classroom. I'm not always sure that's the best idea, but that's the way it worked. So we had paired up some of those students um, with little guys in grade one and two to read. So they were in grade um, seven, eight, and nine. And it was so sweet because they would, um, those, those older students who rarely got to school on time would be there because we set up the reading first thing in the morning. And they would go down to the classroom and pick up their little people. Often they were little kids who um, English wasn't their first language and they didn't really have anybody at home um, that could read with them. So these older students would do their home reading with them. And these little, their little people would just light up when they came to the door. And for a lot of these students, they didn't get a lot of people lighting up when they saw them. So it was a really great experience, I think, for both. Um, and again, kind of comes into that idea that um, often our really um, unlikely leaders are really good mentors. Um, Cross-graded activities, again, Reading Buddies is an example, but um, some schools have regular kind of family groupings or something else that they call that where on um, once a month or so, students from different grades across the school get together and take part in different activities, maybe for an afternoon, um, maybe for a whole day. And again, if we can make those connections and keep those groups together, it's a good example of how older students can mentor um, younger students. There's some cool work being done, um, again, with, with students and usually an adult involved, maybe a school counselor, around transitions. So looking at that transition, perhaps between grade six and grade seven, or grade nine in high school and pairing up students um, ahead of time. So they get to know uh, the younger students and they can take away some of that fear um, of switching into junior high or switching into high school. And then the idea of just sports and coaching and clubs, often those um, bring together, again, people who have different um, who may not spend time together during the day, but come together around a, a specific interest. And you often see students developing um, a really strong relationship with their coach. 
Sometimes it's the older students on the team um, mentoring the younger players. Um, I think similarly with other, um, other adults that come into the building on a regular basis and come into contact with our students on a regular basis, sometimes those informal kinds of mentoring relationships are formed. Now, does anybody have any other kinds of examples of those informal mentoring relationships that they've seen or been part of? I don't know, Kim, if you have any um, examples from your experience with Grand Yellowhead or other school districts. Um, at Highbury School Division in the area of Slave Lake, um, the school that I was at was a kindergarten to grade three school. And we would invite the students who were junior high to high school age um, from the outreach to come over. and. The way that we didn't necessarily pair it around um, academics, but we did it more around um, areas of interest. So if we had um, some of the students who were interested more in the sports, we would bring them over and they would participate in our gym classes. Um, if we had those that were interested in the arts um, or were more on the creative side, we had them coming in during um, an art class, um, depending on the grouping that they were with. And then in a on a personal level, my son is um, uh, bilaterally cochlear implanted and he's deaf, um, but he is uh, an oral speaker and uh, he has done a lot of informal mentoring of just uh, working with students um, within both the school divisions that my husband and I were working with, um, just making kids feel comfortable with being deaf, being different, um, especially as they were transitioning from those elementary years into junior and senior high. So just before I left Grand Yellowhead, he actually met with a group of kids virtually and they just asked, at, were able to just sit and ask questions. He still connects up uh, every now and then he'll get a text from one of them just saying, hey, what did you do when? <laughs> and, and, and so they, they, they stay connected, but not often. Um, but that would be a, another form of informal mentorship that I've been involved with. I think of our agency with the um, movement this year to doing virtual mentoring. Um, we had also um, set up a, a, a new program within our agency to do virtual tutoring, um, where tutoring was the intentional focus of the of the relationship. But um, definitely through that, we we had expected the um, tutoring relationships to particularly for the high school or junior high students to kind of transition as their subjects transitioned. Um, and we've seen a lot of our tutoring, um, our tutoring matches continue um, much longer than we thought um, coming up to the kind of year mark because of the relationship that they've developed. And so while it's not necessarily mentoring um, at its at its um, kind of core, it's it's tutoring. The mentoring happens naturally, and I know we've had feedback from from students that have said like they've taught me in a way that I wasn't absorbing from my teacher, and and so it's just it's really interesting to see those relationships um, develop as as a result. That's great to hear, especially that. Um... You know they, that they're lasting. Some of those relationships are lasting longer than you had anticipated. So that's kind of a um, maybe an unexpected outcome, but really positive. When we think about, you know, there's kind of school-based mentoring and then community-based mentoring. If we want to kind of make those distinctions, so when we think about school-based mentoring, this could be. Um, adults coming into the school to mentor, or it could be teams, and we'll talk about team mentoring um, in, a, in a minute. So when adults come into the building to mentor students, or perhaps when students go to where the adults are, um, if you, you may be uh, in a place where you are fortunate enough to have um, an organization to support that mentoring, like um, BGC Bigs or Big Brothers Big Sisters and Boys and Girls Clubs in different communities. And um, when that's the case, and people from those agencies jump in, if I'm giving misinformation, or if you have something to add, 
Um, but often they will assist with um, recruiting the mentors, with um, training uh, the mentors and providing that ongoing support, sometimes even um, recruiting the um, mentees or giving a, um, some suggestions about, you know, how to select your mentees. Um, and that is one, um, one of the examples of having um, in-school mentoring through an organization. And when, um, when I was a principal in actually, I had the luxury in each of the schools I was at to have um, support and a mentoring initiative through Big Brothers Big Sisters. And it was, uh, it was wonderful. Um, what can happen is you might be in a community where you don't have those kinds of supports, or even I know organizations um, in bigger centers, there's always more demand um, than there is capacity. So, you know, even in Edmonton, I'm sure there's a number of schools that would um, love to have that, that support, but it's just not realistic. I mean, in Edmonton public alone, there's like 214 schools. So that's a bit unmanageable. Um, so there's that kind of form of, of in-school mentoring. There's, or school-based mentoring, in-school mentoring. There's also um, other, there's schools who have created their own uh, school-based mentoring, bringing adults into the school. And this can be in many different ways. So I know an elementary school where they had um, uh, a, a parent who was really interested in getting a mentoring program going. So she kind of spearheaded that initiative at the school and recruited other adults to come in and their focus was on literacy as well. Um, so she recruited the, the mentors, she helped do all the screening, um, she did some training with them about, you know, what would they need to know about the students they were going to be working with. Um, they went through some tips on how to read with students, what are some different strategies. And so um, that was one, that was one example of a school that did not have those supports, but was able um, to get that going. There's other examples. Um, intergenerational mentoring is really something that is gaining gaining popularity, gaining steam. Um, it's so beneficial to both the seniors who are the mentors and the, and the children and youth, often who don't have grandparents in their lives. And there's, I know of a couple of schools that have um, started intergenerational mentoring initiatives um, on their own without, you know, without the support of another agency. So uh, they, there's one where the, the mentors were coming once a week in the afternoon. It was in um, kind of a high needs area of the city. And so there needed to be some work and some work done with the mentors around um, trauma-informed practices and learning about um, how the brain works and what happens when children have experienced trauma and how the children may not respond in the way that they thought they would. Um, but again, a really successful program that was started and supported by uh, an individual that worked at that school. Another example I know of is students who actually go to um, a senior center. And so their mentoring happens, happens there. And it's really cool to see it was a junior high and I went to visit once and there was a group of um, junior high students with a group of seniors and the seniors were teaching these junior high students how to knit. And then in another corner, there was a group and the junior high students were teaching um, the seniors how to do more things on their iPads. So it was kind of, again, reciprocal, um, but really cool to see. So um, we'll talk a little bit about some resources that might be helpful um, for everybody, but particularly if you're in a situation where you'd like to start some mentoring initiatives, but don't, um, don't have the luxury of an organization to provide you with that support. We I talked a little bit about, well, I'll talk about that with team mentoring, um, but those are, those are some of the examples um, of, of what can happen. I know that it, mostly through organizations, but there's also some corporate mentoring that, that can happen. And I know actually Alberta Ed used to have a corporate mentoring um, initiative prior to COVID where students from a nearby school would come at lunch and they were paired up with um, adults who worked for Alberta Education or others that worked in that building. Uh, and they were mentored um, once a week. 
I know that there was a partnership between the body shop and an elementary school for a little while and that um, the store would allow their employees to mentor an hour a week on company time and get paid. Uh, so another kind of creative way of bringing adults into your um, into youth, children and youth lives. Any questions or comments about that? Nope. Okay. So team mentoring, really looking at that um, idea. You know, we have a we kind of have a captive audience of teens in our junior highs and senior highs. <laughs> um, so finding mentors um, isn't usually an issue. And then having them mentor younger students. So what the research says is a two year age difference between the mentor and the mentee um, garners the best results. That doesn't mean that if there's not two years, there, you know, there's not good results. It's just the best results tend to be when there's that two year age difference. Um, between the students. Um, and again, the research shows that when students are given the choice to mentor, as opposed to um, just kind of being told they'll met, they're going to be a mentor, is also more effective. So I know that in some, sometimes classes have chosen to mentor other classes. And so the recommendation is always that those students that are the mentors are given an option so that if they don't choose to mentor during that time, they have another option of something that they can do. Again, that transition piece. So an example of that is um, I, I worked with a junior high teacher who he had a grade eight class and he was pairing his grade eight class up with a grade six class from one of the feeder junior highs or feeder elementary schools. Um, so he did do it as a class, but he also understood that not every student was gonna be excited about that. Um, so he did give them an option. So if they weren't going to mentor, they could pick um, kind of a, a project like a research project or something of their choice, something that they were interested in. And they could do that while the other students were mentoring. So they would all meet in the library. So everybody was supervised. Um, and you know, this, the students that were mentoring got together with their mentees and the students that had chosen not to um, you know, were doing their projects. What ended up happening was some of the students who had decided they didn't want to mentor, once they saw what was happening, changed their minds and decided that's what they, that's what they wanted to do. And so the goal of that, there was some um, literacy goals there. There was also some opportunity just to build relationships and opportunities too to talk about um, junior high life. What was it like? What were the fears of those grade sixes coming in? They'd take them on tours around the school. They'd sit, you know, they, they would do some, um, one day I know they did a scavenger hunt in the school. So different activities and, and different ways of easing that transition um, and in that case, they did use the whole class and, and they did, um, they did all the uh, mentor training and the support um, on their own. So they didn't have a, they didn't have an organization involved and they would have the mentee, the mentors journal um, after their sessions. And they also, the teacher also devoted time for the mentors to plan their activities, to plan out what they were going to do with their mentees. And they would sometimes do that in groups and together come up with a plan for what they were gonna do um, the next time they met their, their mentees. So that's an example of that transition mentoring um, and kind of setting it up on their own with a class. Others, you know, other schools um, just find students who want to volunteer, Again, um, I always, I'm a big proponent of going to some of our unlikely leaders who may need um, to actually be approached to be a mentor because they may not think they have anything to offer. And again, often those students make amazing mentors. When you have a student who struggled to learn to read, helping a younger student who's struggling to learn to read, um, they have amazing strategies because they've had to use them themselves. So thinking about some of those things. And again, that idea that in those situations, um, how they match the training, the ongoing support is provided in-house. 
I know that there are also, um, I know that, that BGC Biggs Edmonton and other organizations support um, in school mentoring and support team mentoring in, in different schools around um, the city. And I think that, um, that you've been approached, the people that are here from that organization have been approached by a couple of, of high schools about um, getting something started. Is that, am I correct in that? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. You've got some insider information. I do have some insider information. <laughs> yes, we have. We have. We've got a couple, um, mostly within um, our Catholic school district right now. But okay. Um, we have been um, chatting about starting some team mentoring programs again this year, which is wonderful. That's exciting. Very exciting. Yes. Which is why we're all here today. That's great. Well, if you have like questions, fire away. Yes. <laughs> Thank um, you. And again, sometimes those um, team mentoring initiatives have specific outcomes and a purpose. Um, sometimes it's more relationship building. But again, when you look to the research, the results are better when there are some specific outcomes and there is a, a purpose. Sometimes when, when people, um, when the students meet together for like, let's say an hour, um, Often then same with the corporate mentoring, it's sort of that 20-20-20 combination. So let's say they're meeting um, over the lunch hour, maybe 20 minutes is, is having lunch um, or just kind of that building a relationship piece, 20 minutes is on whatever the purpose is. So whether that might be some um, career exploration activities or literacy or um, some other work that the student has brought that they need assistance with. And then the last 20 minutes is doing something fun. So a board game or an activity or something that um, the mentee enjoys and the mentor um, is engaging with them around that. But the kind of really loosey-goosey, let's just get together and spend an hour together, um, while it's probably a lot of fun and it builds that relationship, um, the outcomes aren't as strong, if that makes sense to people. Teen mentoring is also one of the fastest growing types of mentoring. And again, I think because those teens are readily available in our schools. <laughs> um, and often, you know, a lot of our students are looking to get involved in something. And when you think about the benefits to the mentor, um, when you think back to that slide, you can probably see why um, some of our unlikely leaders really rise to the occasion and get a lot out of that, um, get a lot out of that relationship. Any questions about that part? Again, and I think um, I think our for our organizations that do formal mentoring know this, but the um, kind of the secret sauce seems to be meeting once a week for at least an hour. And again, that's where it, that's where you see um, the best results in mentoring relationships. And if they can last, you know. A, a longer period of time. I know sometimes with high school students, it's tough because they may just have that semester. Um, in other cases, it can go for the entire school year and sometimes beyond, depending on, um, on what that situation is or what that looks like. So you may or may not be aware of this, but high school students can earn career and technology study credits through mentoring. So there are five um, mentoring courses, each are one credit that um, the students can take. They, um, we know of uh, somebody who's now a principal, but when she was a high school teacher, she was really creative and she kind of combined um, all of them and looked at what were the outcomes in the five and then kind of created her own, um, I guess, course, I think she did the four credits, maybe not the full five um, over the over a period of time. So she found that there were activities that the students could be involved in um, that would cover the different objectives from more than one of these courses. So that was kind of a creative way of, of doing this. Not all students are motivated by getting the credits, but for some students who are struggling um, to get enough credits to graduate, this can often be something that they um, are interested in and can be really successful at. And so on, um, 
on the AMP website, there's more information about the credits. But again, uh, that's sometimes something that high schools don't know and might be interested in looking into if they're already looking at a mentoring initiative in their school. Any questions about that? Anything, anybody been involved in these before? Nope. One of the resources um, that I'll draw your attention to when we go on the website is the um, High School Teen Mentoring Handbook. And it's a resource um, that is written for students who are going to be mentoring. And um, a lot of the information that's in that handbook uh, covers the outcomes in that first introduction to mentorship um, course. So it's, a, it's meant to be aligned to that. And uh, that along with the online mentor training um, meets pretty much all the objectives and outcomes in that first course. Um, and then the uh, kind of junior high version of the CTS, the CTF, um, there's also some resources on the website that um, show some, this is sort of less structured and junior high teachers can create um, their challenges um, to meet different curricular outcomes. And so there are um, a couple on the Alberta Education website, the Career and Technology Foundations. Um, there's already some units created that are related to mentoring, perhaps not directly, but indirectly related to mentoring. So again, for junior highs, um, wanting to kind of introduce this concept, there are some activities already planned out that you can use and adapt. Again, any questions, comments? I should have said with the, um, the high school, um, the CTS credits, we have um, on our website, and I'll show it to you, um, a high school teen mentoring network portal, and there are resources on there. And that individual was generously shared all of her resources um, that she used to teach those courses. And so they're on there for people to um, use and borrow and adapt. Um, there's also some uh, health and wellness lesson plans for grades four to six and for grade eights um, on the AMP website in the mentoring in schools resource section, which we'll take a look at. So even to start introducing some of this um, at the elementary grades. And again, if they're going to be reading buddies or, or doing that kind of, um, those kinds of relationship building activities, there's some information in there. Um, and then the community-based mentoring. So again, outside of school, um, usually through an agency, the formal kinds of one-to-one -one mentoring um, through organizations like Big, Sis Big Brothers Big Sisters. Also, when we think about less formal um, mentoring in the community, it could be like 4-H cadet, somewhere where, where kids go on a regular basis and interact with adults and usually the same adults. Um, those adults may not really become, you know, the, a mentor for all of the youth that attend, but certainly for some, um, those are really important adults in their lives. And in the, in the formal um, mentoring, the matching training, ongoing support is provided through that organization. And to some lesser extent, also in those, um, in those other kinds of clubs, activities, even in sports, often coaches get a little bit of a background in, um, you know, what are healthy developmental relationships, those kinds of things. In those formal ones too, there are most often specific outcomes and purpose. Um, 
Um, again, can look at this as a whole class, whole school, targeted intervention for specific students, um, a way of enhancing or adding to opportunities for those to build relationships in those informal, more informal ways. Oh, thanks, Kim, for putting those in there. Yeah, I thought it would be easier for everyone if I just threw those in the chat line for, for everybody. Before I um, before we kind of start talking about um, kind of our collaborative community network, do people have questions about the team mentoring? Any comments? I know that some of you, um, you know, obviously have been asked by some high schools. Some of you are in situations where you may not have um, an organization to support you. Do you have any questions? Is there information that you would like um, about kind of strengthening existing initiatives or starting one out? With the CTS course that you had spoken about earlier, um, is that typically offered in conjunction with the high school teen mentoring programs? Do um, have staff led those in the past um, and that gets incorporated yeah, as a piece yeah. of the program? Um, well, often, yeah. It's often schools that are looking at, um, are looking at some mentoring. And that is sometimes a way um, to get it started and to bring students into that idea is through offering those, those courses. Not all schools have the capacity because you know there's so many CTS courses and so um, not every school has the capacity to offer them, um, but some have chosen to and been really creative about how they do that. Thank you. I think again, if high schools are approaching um, approaching you or an organization about about team mentoring, it might be something to bring up if they don't already know about it, and that might be something that they want to consider. Again, it has to be teacher led, so it does require um, teacher time. Leanne, thanks for sharing that uh, Cold Lake is um, FCSS is looking to start um, a school team mentoring program. There will be lots of resources that uh, Caroline talked about that's on the AMP website that will um, will help them with this as they move forward. Yeah, that's exciting. So a couple of years ago now, I my timelines are very messed up by COVID, so I'm losing track of how long ago. Um, but AMP was um, really fortunate to receive a grant. The three-year grant has turned into a longer grant because um, there's recognition that uh, life hasn't been what we had expected, but received um, funding through a private funder um, to create and support a provincial kind of um, collaborative community focused on mentoring in schools, particularly teen mentoring. So um, this funder, um, one of their areas that they fund is adolescent um, well-being, social emotional well-being. So they were very aware that mentoring contributed um, to adolescent social emotional well-being. So nobody had to convince them of that. And what they really wanted to see was an increase in um, teen mentoring um, in our schools across the province. So with that funding, um, AMP started by offering um, workshops and sessions in different locations uh, across the province. Um, of course, now that uh, we can't really meet in person, um, a lot of that has gone to being virtual. Um, so again, those sessions uh, really vary in the topics and they're really driven by the people who um, are participating. So um, at the end of the workshops, we always have a survey that we ask people to fill out and the information from that survey really drives what we do in the next, um, in the next sessions. So um, we're going to ask you to do that at the end of today. Um, 
but uh, you know, we've talked before, things have come up about um, mentor training and about um, recruiting mentors and all sorts of different topics. And we um, try to address them in those sessions. And often we find somebody who is actually doing that work currently and have them come and share or a few people share um, about what they're doing in those sessions. So they're um, starting up again for this year. And they're kind of the kickoff is um, a summit on October 20th, and it's called Supporting Adolescent Wellbeing Through Strengthening Webs of Support. So the keynote speaker, Derek Peterson, um, does a lot of work in what we might call informal mentoring, maybe even natural supports, where um, he talks about connecting our mostly youth, so not so much children, more kind of that adolescent age, um, with people in their lives to provide supports in different ways. So he does some really interesting work. And then there are also um, sessions on, on different topics. So there's a session around um, that's being um, facilitated by a group that does a lot of work with adolescent mental health. Um, there's a session on intergenerational mentoring. Um, there's going to be a youth panel. There's two power of youth, power of mentoring sessions for youth where they're paired up with um, people, business people to talk about careers and what do they need to know and what questions do they have? And that whole transition from um, high school to the um, outside world, whether that be post-secondary or work or whatever that looks like. So lots of different um, sessions available for adults and for um, students. And then there's also the network series, and hopefully this will work for me. Can you see that on there? Yeah, we've got it. And you can see all my weird little pop up -y things. But anyway, um, so on the on our website under the it's under the resource tab here. And if you go resources for schools, then this teen mentoring collaborative community network pops up. And so it has all the different workshops that are happening um, over the course of this year. And these are the ones that are really, the topics are really driven um, by the participants. So for example, today um, we'll take the information that comes out of the survey and start thinking about what will that one in November look like. So there's a North cohort and a South cohort, and those were created really when we could get together in person and then people didn't have to travel as far. Um, but now that they're virtual, it doesn't really matter which one you attend. Um, during those workshops, there's always time for people to um, go into breakout rooms, either around a, a particular topic or sometimes we've broken out into rural and urban to have different conversations. So realistically, um, Either one is fine <laughs> to attend. So we have some of the regional ones. We also have a couple of provincial webinars where we just bring everybody together, kind of like today's. Um, and then we're really hoping, we had hoped that the November workshops would be in person, but it doesn't look like they're going to be. So we're going to shift the times. The times are on there. There are different times if it's virtual. Um, and then really hoping that in May, uh, we'll be able to get together in person. So there's, um, there's no cost for those and you don't have to sign up for um, the whole thing. You don't have to have already attended to sign up. Um, so it's really, you know, it's really which ones can you attend? And through that, there is also, um, we have our portal, which I think I can go to here. So this is a place where, oh great, now I'm gonna to have to sign in again and hope I remember my password. See if this works. Oh, okay. I might just have to tell you about it. Oh, there we go. Excellent. So in here, um, 
this is where we really tried to set something up where people could come on, um, introduce themselves, have some conversations. There are resources in here as well. Um, so in the dashboard here, you will see um, upcoming events. So the summit is on there. There's also an opportunity um, to introduce yourself and talk about where you're from. And then there's different discussions that you can participate in. So we haven't got a lot of this going yet, um, but there are several different areas that you can join in discussions on, and you can also create your own. So that is um, kind of the portal that we're trying to uh, grow and have people be able to connect around mentoring in schools and, and team mentoring. And so when you um, first go on, you'll go, it'll be a little um, tab to register and you just have to fill out the information. It's pretty basic and quick. And then you'll get an email back um, with the information that you need to get in into that. So that is, um, that's that piece. And then I think we're going to get into some of the resources that we have. Any questions about the portal or the summit? Nope. Okay. Um, I'll just go back here and go through some of the resources that, um, that we had talked about. So here again, if we go to the mentoring resources for schools, um, there's the Teen Mentoring Community Collaborative, Collaborative Community Network. And um, Kim, we need to take that ATA workshop off, don't we? So, yeah, I was told that the ATA is not um, running that workshop, but I just noticed um, that I got a uh, all call to present it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to figure out what's going on. <laughs> okay, so the ATA might have a workshop um, for schools. And the beauty of those ATA workshops is that they are really affordable. Um, so for schools that have are a bit strapped, um, it, it's really a great deal. And even if a couple of schools want to get together, uh, there is lots of um, lots of value for the money there. And I know that... Um, Kim is one of the ATA instructors, and that's another real bonus is that the people that they have instructing are people who are in schools, working in districts, um, and really kind of have their finger on the pulse of what's happening um, in those environments, which is great. So some of the um, some of the resources that I wanted to kind of highlight, especially if you're kind of getting started is this framework for building mentoring relationships in schools. So it goes through, it's really a, a toolkit. You can download it. Um, we also, at the end of last year, I guess there was some money left. So AMP did a huge print run. So there are um, hard copies available as well. So if for whatever reason, downloading, um, you know, is, is not an option or not a great option. Uh, we can also mail hard copies out. But in this building mentoring relationships, it really is kind of a starting point. It's got lots of information. And again, um, some research in the beginning about the benefits of mentoring. You know, if you're kind of, you know, I remember um, needing to kind of sell this concept to my assistant superintendent. So a lot of the information in there was really helpful in doing that. Um, it looks at the different kinds of mentoring approaches that we talked about today. Um, and then it kind of goes through different models that you might want to think about. And in the appendix, which is really, I found really useful, are um, templates to do some initial planning and thinking about um, starting a program. Like who are, who's in your community that might be able to support you? Um, you know, what resources do you have already in your school? Who are people in the school that could help get this going and support it? So lots of really great tools um, to start your thinking about what this could look like. So it's a great starting place. 
um, this high school team mentoring, these high school team mentoring materials. So the handbook um, has been recently revised and is available in English and French, similarly with the activity book. So the handbook is the resource that was written for, um, you know, for high school students. And it takes them through all the different things that they will need to know as a mentor. So for example, it talks about typical characteristics of children and adolescents at different ages. So what can they expect from their mentees? Um, there's a little, there's a section about knowing their own developmental assets. What, you know, what are their strengths? Um, how do they build on strengths in their mentees? Um, there talks about, you know, building resiliency, how, what to talk to your mentee about, things like talk less, ask more, um, say what you see, describes what working, what's working well. So lots of great information um, for those teen mentors in that book. And again, it meets a lot of the objectives from those CTS courses. Um, a caution, and I'm sure none of you would do this, but um, I wouldn't recommend just giving it to the teens and saying, read this. <laughs> And, and learn it. Um, it's pretty print heavy. And so for a lot of um, a lot of our reluctant readers or our students where English is not their first language, um, it can be a bit tough. So I know that teachers who have used it um, have worked through have worked through the different sections with their students so that they're not left on their own to try and read and comprehend it all. And then the activity book kind of complements the, the handbook and it has um, act, suggestions for activities that the, the mentors can do with their mentees. Um, this, was, this resource was created um, with, with some support from advanced education. So in the, um, in the activity book, there's a bit of an emphasis, I would say on kind of, um, what are your strengths? What are your interests? Even moving into a little bit of career exploration. So again, they don't have to be followed, but um, they are there for you to use and to adapt. What, what some people have said is that by going through some of those activities with the mentees, the mentors are thinking more about what are their strengths? What are their interests? Um, what might they want to look into more as far as uh, beyond school goes? So kind of um, double benefits there. Caroline, I could also see these resources being useful for the non-educators in this group that are coming from an outside agency as a way to kind of just frame things or to have that conversation with um, teachers um, in a school as they're going through to, to plan their program. For sure. Yep. And, and again, that framework for building relationships, you're right. It would be a great... Um, for this, you know, for schools who are asking for this, it would be great to look at that and it, and and to be able to um, use some of those ideas for questions about how they thought about and who's this and for sure. Um, also, you know, the high school teen mentoring handbook. There are pieces in there that I know um, schools who have adults coming in um, have used some of the sections with adults too because you know there's a lot of adults who either. Um, don't have kids or their kids are much older, um, that refresher about what can they expect from kids at different ages is often really appreciated. So not just for um, our high school students. And this resource is also a great one. And again, um, for both kind of schools that are doing it themselves or for organizations that are working with schools, this toolkit is kind of the um, DIY <laughs> for teen mentoring. So in it, it has um, all kinds of different tools. So it has all of these different sections here, um, ranging from planning your program, how to recruit, um, screening, training, matching, um, the idea of match closures, which is really important. Um, and then it also has actual tools. So um, down here in the list of tools, it has um, a, like a, a one-page promo, um, a little PowerPoint, um, 
a logic model template. I when I until I went to government, I had never seen a logic model before. And even then, I didn't think it was very logical. But I know in sometimes when people are applying for funding um, for their mentoring programs, it, it those have been very helpful. So all of these tools here are um, editable. So you can take one of these and then you can make it your own or make it fit um, what you you know, what works for you. You can put different logos on them. You can change the wording around. Uh, they're just there um, as an example and to be able to help get started if you need that. So it's a really great resource. Um, it was initially created kind of in a partnership between AMP and the Society for Safe and Caring Schools and Communities, which no longer exists. So, um, it now belongs to AMP and AMP just got the um, kind of the, the rights to edit it. And so um, we're doing some revising and refreshing. Some of the uh, links are no longer uh, valid or work. So there's um, some work to be done there to get it um, up and moving and refreshed but there's still some great tools in there. And again, they're all downloadable. Any questions about those resources? Sorry, I'll just move ahead here. Um, we talked a little bit about that. As, um, and I'm, I'm not sure if people are aware or not, but there's also uh, online, AMP has online um, mentor kind of orientation training that um, is applicable for teen mentors as well as adults. Again, um, when I've used it before, especially with students, I've had them come together and they're each on their own um, device, but we go through it together. So again, you can stop, you can explain things, you can make sure that they're understanding, you can have conversations about some of the, the topics. It's designed so you can stop and then pick up and start again, so you don't have to go through it um, all at once. And there are um, certificates available at the end. So at the end of it, students can print out a little certificate and have that. You know, some of our high school students use that um, as part of their resume when they're applying for jobs. So lots of different um, purposes with that. There's also some mentee, um, a mentee online training as well. And those are at no, um, there's no cost involved in those. So those are some, that's a lot, but those are some resources um, that you can take a peek at that can maybe help you get, um, get started. Um, and then on the Alberta education website, again, I talked about how um, mentoring came up as one of the practices that supports welcoming, caring, respectful, and safe learning environments. So um, as part of that, Alberta Ed created a bit of a page um, around this. And part of this is uh, they've got all kinds of information here, some of that research, how it contributes to a positive school culture. But there's also a short little video on an introduction to mentoring. Um, so again, for those of you that are working with schools, this is sometimes a good introduction. If you're working in a school, um, great introduction to staff around mentoring. And it also has, hopefully it's on here. Um, there's also a conversation guide that comes with it, but I'm not seeing where it is right now. Um, I know if you just Google, oh, here we go, the conversation guide. So there's also a conversation guide that accompanies the video. So again, great way to introduce this concept. <laughs> if it comes up, there we go. Um, great way to introduce this concept to people who may not be very familiar with mentoring and its benefits. So just another resource um, there. And you will, um, at, after this, Shannon will email out um, a copy of the slides. And so you will have all of this information um, readily available when, uh, when we're done. Any questions about the resources? Nope. OK, 
Okay, so just before we um, move on, we thought we would give you a few minutes to take a look at that survey. And again, um, it really helps us in shaping what the next uh, of the series, what the next webinars in the series are going to cover. Um, so I just, I got to, I don't know if I can, I'll have to stop sharing my screen to be able to paste the link in there. I've already done it, Caroline. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. So if people want to go there um, and fill it out now or cut and paste it and fill it out later, and I think Shannon will also be um, sending this out as well. But while people are doing that again, um, if there's any questions or comments or people want to share um, share things that they've that they've done or seen, please feel free to ask. That seems like a lot of information, and I hope that um, I hope that it was helpful to the people who, to all of you, and you got to take something away that will help you. Or we covered um, somewhat what you were hoping to get out of the session. And again, if um, if there's some things we didn't cover, please let us know. Kim, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Nothing that I wanted to add, but I'd like to do a little wrap up activity if we're ready to, okay. to do that. That sounds great. I'd like to um, end our session today with a little bit of um, an action activity. Um, so it's gonna have each of you create a bit of an action statement. Um, so thinking back um, to the information that Caroline shared with you, on uh, mentoring and the benefits for both the mentor and the mentee, um, how to get started and any of the resources she shared. Um, I would like you to um, create an action statement that starts with, I am, I will, or I believe. And I'd like you to just take a minute to um, start typing it into the chat box, but don't hit enter uh, until I tell you to. So create your action statement starting with I am, I will, or I believe based on what you've heard today. And don't hit enter until I say. You can turn your camera off if that helps you to be creative um, so that we're not all staring um, at each other. And on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to press enter and we're gonna have what we call a chat waterfall. All of our action statements were, will be coming up in the chat and then you can read what everybody has to say. So on the count of three, press enter. One, two, three. And then you can take a look at what everybody has to say about their next steps. Well, Caroline, it looks like we have some great um, action statements great. Here. Just reading through those. Um, yeah, super excited to see um, what everybody is does with all of the information and you know just also to um, to remember that um, Kim and I are here to help support you and answer questions 
I have my personal email on there just because my um, kind of my official more full-time role with AMP is ending at the end of September, but I am continuing to stay um, involved for a bit and particularly around the mentoring and schools piece. So please um, feel free to contact either one of us if you need more information um, or if you, want to if you want us to connect you to somebody who's doing similar work, we're certainly um, open to doing that. And we love to hear what people are taking away and what you're doing with this. So please feel free to contact us if you need something, but also to share um, to share stories, which we also really love to hear. So that, yeah, that's kind of it for us, other than if anybody's got some last questions or comments, um, Kim and I can stick around for a few minutes if people want to stay on and, uh, and ask. But other than that, we hope that everybody has a great evening and thank you for um, spending time at the end of what was probably a long day um, to learn about this. We're really excited about it and um, hopefully that came through and we're really excited to see where you take it. Have a great evening, everyone.